The Rodale Institute is a 501c nonprofit organization that works in the area of research and education in organic agriculture. Our farm here is 333 acres and it serves as the home for our, our research and education activities. It's also the world headquarters for the Institute's larger outreach programs because we do work internationally as well. My name is Jeff Moyer. I'm the farm director for the Rodale Institute and chairman of the National Organic Standards Board. Our farming systems trial is the longest term side-by-side -side comparison of organic and conventional agriculture in the world. It's been in operation now since 1981, so this was our, our 29th season uh, in that experiment. And I tell everybody it was set up as a five-year experiment, so we can't even count to five because here we are 29 years later still working on it. We took a piece of land that was not originally part of the, the Rodeo Institute farm. It was a separate piece of land that we rented from one of our neighbors. Uh, in that particular field, we kept one third of the, the research plots as organic, as uh, conventional. I'm sorry, so they are still in a corn soybean rotation that get all of the sprays that any conventional farmer in Pennsylvania would be putting on on their crops. The same chemical fertilizers, the same uh, synthetic pesticides would be applied to those particular fields. The other two thirds of the research plots we transitioned into an organic system. Uh, one in an animal-based system, because there's a lot of farmers in Pennsylvania have animals, a lot of people around the world keep animals, and then also what happens when you're in a cash grain farm where you don't have animals, is it still possible to uh, farm organically without manure. It took about three years until we were actually producing crops in the organic systems that were equal to the conventional system. And that makes a lot of sense because in the initial year, we had just taken soil that was very used to getting chemical fertilizer and it didn't get any chemical fertilizer so it took us a little bit of time to build up the the nutrient quality of the soil using cover crops or, or animal manures depending on the, on the treatment. The other thing we were trying to determine with that project was are there various crops that we could plant that would help mitigate any transitional problems. Soybeans was a good example. Uh, the first year we planted soybeans our yields were completely equal on the organic system as they were on the conventional system. Corn, on the other hand, which is a heavy feeder of nitrogen, we planted it the very first year and we didn't give it any chemical fertilizer, and so it struggled that first year to try to make a, a reasonable yield, and that would sort of make sense. So when we make recommendations to farmers, we would make recommendations that they transition into crops, or start with crops like hay or soybeans that don't need uh, a heavy uh, nitrogen fertilizer feeding, uh, don't need maybe as many uh, herbicides so we can manage them more efficiently and then transition fields on a farm over time. You don't have to take your whole farm and transition it all at once. You can do it in pieces and so that's what we suggest that farmers do. Pick those areas that are most likely to succeed and those crops in your rotation that are most likely to succeed. Start with those in your transition process and over a period of three years then your entire farm is in the, in the process and, and, and on the way to being transitioned.